My name is Haley, and my story is probably one of the weirdest you'll ever hear. First off, Haley was the name I chose when I was seven. When I was born, my parents never gave me a name. My dad left a few days after I was born. When I asked mom about dad, she said, your father ran away to become an actor in California. My mom just called me you or girl or child whenever she wanted my attention. I was only a kid. I didn't know any better. When I started school, I told everyone my name was Yu. Are you Chinese? They thought my name was spelled Y-U. Yeah, I think so. But all the other kids had great names. I hated them for it, and I was always super jealous. It made me feel rotten to think that my parents didn't even love me enough to name me. It wasn't until second grade that my teacher finally said something. She asked if my name really was Yu after I spelt it three different ways on my homework. That's what my mom calls me. What else does she call you? I have lots of names. Girl, kid, child, mistake. My teacher looked horrified. She called my mom and they met with the principal. The next thing I knew, they'd called in child services, who took me away from my mom and moved me to a new family. My new mom let me pick my own name. I picked Haley because it was the first name I saw on the cover of a magazine sitting on her kitchen table. For a while, I was really happy. I finally had a name, but then my jealousy kicked in again. When I was in the seventh grade, Everyone at my new school was always talking about where their parents were taking them. My mom is taking me to Disney World this summer. My dad just bought a new car and said I can have it when I'm older. I didn't want to bug my sweet new parents to spend even more money on me. So instead of feeling sorry for myself, I decided to show them up. My parents are taking me on a cruise around the world this summer. Oh, and then we're going to Disney too. Everyone was shocked. It sounded like the coolest vacation ever. Too bad it was a lie. But now everyone wanted pictures and videos of the vacation. Thankfully, my new dad was a photographer and owned a studio in town. One night, I snuck into his office while he was sleeping and stole the keys to his studio. He had a whole bunch of fake backgrounds I could use. All I had to do was stand in front of the camera and smile. I took pictures in Paris, Rome, Tokyo, Hawaii, and Los Angeles. Of course, I made sure to take a bunch of pictures in Disney World. Everyone fell for it. I was the coolest kid in school, and everyone wanted to know what life was like in other countries. France? Oh, it's just like here, except they speak French. Japan? Same as here, but they speak Japanese. This one girl, Nicole, thought I was so cool but only at first. She wanted to be my best friend and said I could go on vacation with her family next summer. We did everything together. I was really fond of Nicole and thought she was just the prettiest. But yeah, sometimes it got hard being in my best friend's shadow all the time. I felt a twinge of jealousy now and then, especially when all the cute boys were all over her and hardly ever seemed to notice me. One day, as Nicole and I were walking down the corridor, I walked straight into someone. Ow! Watch it! I found myself looking at the cutest guy I'd ever seen. As he studied me, he looked deep into my eyes and said, Wow, you've got the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I'm Jack. I, uh, thank you. I'm... Suddenly, I was yanked out of my dream by Nicole, who dragged me away as though nothing had happened. Come on, we're late for class. The next day, I kept my eyes peeled for the cute boy. And when I did find him, guess who was touching his arm and flirting with him? Nicole! You go to the spring dance with me, Jack? I'd be crazy not to say yes to you. What? Really? That easy? I was furious. Later that day, I confronted Nicole. You could have let me have this one guy, Nicole. You saw him practically singing a sonnet about my eyes. Sorry, Haley. I guess he just likes me and my eyes more. I just gaped at her as she walked away. Who does that to their best friend? She was such a witch. I had to make a pay, and I was going to do it at the dance. I put my stepdad's photography studio to good use again. One day, I invited all the girls going to the dance to come and take pictures in their dresses, even Nicole. The next day, I invited all the guys to take pictures in their suits, including Jack. Then, I combined Nicole's picture with a different boy from the baseball team and made it look like they were going to the dance together. I posted the picture on Facebook and all the kids in school saw it. Jack was so pissed, he didn't show up to the dance. Thanks a lot. You've ruined my night. Maybe don't steal your best friend's crush next time. The next morning, 
Nicole told Jack I'd photoshopped the picture and they got back together, but I didn't care anymore. Everyone thought I was cool for standing up to my backstabbing friend. They were also so impressed with my work that they started paying me to retouch their pictures. Money started rolling in and I became the school's most popular girl. That is, until a Brazilian transfer student showed up. She was gorgeous and suddenly everyone wanted to be her friend. I started to lose my friends and that made me feel really upset. One day, I spotted them all stuck to her in the cafeteria and I walked up to their table. Hey guys, I'm offering a great discount these days. I'll basically retire touch everyone's pictures for free. The Brazilian girl turned to me and said, My friends are all getting makeovers at my mom's salon, so they won't be needing your retouching. Thanks a lot. Maybe you should come by too. You clearly need a lot of work done. Ugh, why did all pretty girls think they had some license to be jerks to everyone else? I wanted to get back at her, but I didn't know how. One day, when we were in the locker room, I found the answer to my question. She was on a call with her surgeon. Turns out, she was a complete fake and had gotten her whole face changed. The next day, I leaked the information on Facebook anonymously. Immediately, everyone started making fun of her and stopped being friends with her. But the next day, I found out she was planning to move because of how much everyone was trolling her. She'd even gotten ill. I felt so bad. I hadn't known it'd grow so out of control, so I went and publicly apologized to her. What a foolish thing to do. Everyone at school lost it at me. Suddenly, I was the villain. I knew I deserved it, but I was devastated because after that, high school was pretty lonely. After graduation, I got a job working at a daycare center. On my first day, I met a boy my age named Mark. He'd worked there for a few years and all the kids loved him. They didn't feel the same about me. One kid threw a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at me on my first day and got my hair all gross and sticky. Mark rushed over to hand me a towel and told me to go wash my hair in the sink. They just have to get used to you. Part of me was annoyed that he was so cool and the other left in a cardboard box. There was a note and an envelope attached to the baby. It read, congratulations, you found our baby. Please don't tell her she was abandoned by her parents. If it helps, tell her she at least cost us a fortune. There's 1500 bucks in the envelope for your troubles and diapers. Thanks, good luck. How could someone be so heartless? How could I just leave this baby alone with $1,500 attached to her? I took her home and told the story to my step-parents. They were horrified that someone would do that. I didn't tell them about the money though. I kept it hidden in my pocket. But they said they couldn't afford to take care of another child. And if I wanted to keep the baby, I'd have to raise and take care of her. So I became a mom. It was also my responsibility to name the baby. I named her Hope, little baby Hope. Hope was a handful at first, but I got the hang of motherhood pretty quick. I'd take Hope to work with me and she got to play with the other kids. A miracle happened. They started to like me. Raising Hope taught me how to talk to and play with other kids in the daycare. It wasn't just about candy and toys. They just wanted someone to talk to and hang out with. Mark definitely noticed. <laughs> Looks like you won't be covered in food today, Haley. And you must be Hope. Hi, I'm Mark. He smiled at her and she laughed. Suddenly, I started panicking. What if my baby Hope started liking him better too? I pulled her away from him. Listen, just stay away from my daughter. She's mine and I'm not sharing her love with you. For a minute, Mark looked shocked and then he left. A few days later while I was at the daycare, some of the kids started fighting. Since Hope was asleep, I left her and ran to the kids to break up the fight. But right in the middle of the fight, I heard Hope scream. I wanted to run to her, but I couldn't leave these kids. For a minute, she was crying and suddenly she stopped. When I got to her, I found her in Mark's arms. She was cooing at him and just then, she saw me and reached her cute baby arms towards me. I suddenly felt overwhelmed. She did love me more than Mark. A happy tear trickled down my cheek and Mark seemed to understand because he said, she is your daughter and she will always choose you. Mark was just good with kids. I didn't need to be jealous of that. But as soon as I had this great revelation about myself, it all came crashing down. One day I got to the daycare to find a rich looking couple waiting for me. The minute they saw me and Hope, the woman jumped and snatched Hope from me. My baby, she looks like an angel. Your baby? Who are you? Turns out they were Hope's birth parents and her dad was really rich now, so they wanted her back. At 
first, I refused, but they took the matter to court, and the court ruled that her birth parents were financially better off and deserved her. I was devastated. As they took my hope away, all I could think was, now that she had everything, she would forget me. But a week later, they all showed up at the daycare again. Hope was crying. I ran to her, and the minute she saw me, she stopped crying and smiled the most adorable smile I had ever seen. They said that Hope wouldn't stop crying so they figured she was missing me. Looks like you were right. She loves you. I guess that makes sense. Say, would you like to babysit Hope? I jumped at the offer. From that day, I became her official babysitter. Time passed and Mark and I started going to the same college. We started dating, and the day after we graduated, he asked me to marry him. On the day of our wedding, six-year-old Hope was our flower girl. It's been four years since our marriage, and we had a little curly-haired boy named Martin. And whenever he seems like a handful, the only person he listens to is his adoptive sister, Hope.